Birthdays are supposed to be the happiest day of the year, especially when you're a little kid. There's nothing more exciting than gathering up all of your friends and family to celebrate. However, one little boy's birthday turned out to be horrible in every way possible. Even his own mother let him down that day. Then the cops were called to school to pick him up, and his entire day changed from there on. Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Here we have birthday boy, Tom. On the day of his birthday, Tom quickly rushed down the stairs to see if there was a celebration waiting for him downstairs. However, all Tom found out was that his mother had forgotten his birthday again. As a kid, it can be devastating to have your birthday be forgotten. It is especially upsetting when your own mother forgets your birthday. However, Tom decided that he would keep his head high and hope that his mom would make it up to him later that day. As his mom got closer to Howe's Elementary, Tom decided to remind his mom that it was his birthday. However, his mom said that she didn't forget about his birthday at all. In fact, she had an amazing surprise waiting for him after school. Tom's mother soon told him about the awesome party at Chuck E. Cheese that she has planned for him. She told him that she invited all of his friends and that it would be happening after school. Tom was so excited about his birthday party that he could hardly contain himself. His mother then gave him a bag of candy and sent him off to school. However, Tom had no idea that the party would never happen. You see, Tom's mom is a single mom and she is constantly working. In fact, she had been working three different jobs to make ends meet, and from 5 a.m. to midnight, she would constantly work. Even though she worked an hour and a half away, she always made it just in time to pick up Tom. Since she worked so much, she wanted to make sure that she was able to spend her son's birthday with him. Finally, it was the end of the day and Tom began to ask all of his friends if they were excited to go party at Chuck E. Cheese. However, none of his friends had any idea about what he was talking about. Still, Tom had faith that his mom would pull through in the end. The school day had finally ended and Tom was waiting outside for his mother to come pick him up. She was usually always on time, so he patiently waited expecting her to come at any moment. However, soon enough he was the last child standing and his mom was nowhere to be found. Eventually, one of the teachers noticed that Tom was standing all by himself. The teacher went over and asked Tom who he was waiting for. He told her that he was waiting for his mom, but that she hadn't shown up yet. So the teacher decided that she would take Tom back inside the school and call up his mother to see where she was. So the teacher quickly got Tom back inside of the school and looked for his mom's number. However, as soon as she called his mother, she was greeted by the sound of sirens. It seems that Tom's mom had been involved in a crazy day, and she quickly shared an update with the teacher. It seems that Tom's mother was having an incredibly hectic day. As she was backing out of her parking space after work, a car came out of nowhere and clipped her. The driver of the vehicle then dramatically fell onto the ground and claimed that he had whiplash. Tom's mom was sorting through the chaos as the fire department and police arrived on the scene. She had no idea when she would be back for Tom. The teacher then brought Tom into the administrative office so that she could find an emergency contact for him. As she searched for that, she heard Tom tell the secretary that it was his birthday and that he was excited to go to Chuck E. Cheese. The teacher didn't have the heart to tell him that he probably wouldn't be going. As she searched for an emergency contact, she soon realized that none came up. As the teacher attempted to make sense of Tom's file, she realized that it was all a big mess. The only emergency contact information that she had was Tom's mother. There was no one else that she could call to pick up the little boy. The teacher needed to act fast. After all, she couldn't leave Tom all alone. So she decided to do the only thing she could think of at the time. She decided to call the police. The teacher quickly called up a police officer because she knew that the child needed someone to watch after him. Soon enough, Officer Daryl Robinson was dispatched. As soon as he got to the school, he instantly recognized Tom. He had seen Tom before and knew that it was Tom's birthday today, and he wanted to know what was going on. Officer Daryl happened to be familiar with Tom's grandpa, so he gave his grandpa a call and told him that he would be dropping him off at his house. However, before bringing him over, Daryl asked Tom's grandpa if he could give Tom a ride around town in his police car since it was his birthday. 
Tom's grandpa was more than okay with that, and the adventure soon began. He had to sit in the back, but he seemed to love it, Officer Daryl explained. Tom absolutely loved being in the police car, and while he sat there, he began to tell the officer about the Chuck E. Cheese plans that fell through. Officer Daryl's heart sank when he found out that the boy's birthday plans had been completely ruined, so the officer decided to help out once more. Police officers of Green Bay are issued one cheeseburger voucher from the local McDonald's, so Officer Daryl decided to treat Tom to a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Tom was super happy that he got to have some McDonald's for his birthday. However, he had no idea that there was still going to be another pit stop. Officer Daryl decided to treat Tom to one last thing. He decided to bring him over to the police station so that he could see how things got done there. In fact, a few fellow officers put together some last-minute gifts for Tom that included a pack of Green Bay Packers cards and a few stick-on tattoos. Tom was so grateful to Officer Daryl for helping to make his birthday special. The story of Officer Daryl's kindness quickly went viral. If I can have the impact my police captain did for me, and he could choose a career in law enforcement and keep this cycle going, I think it would be great," Officer Daryl stated. I didn't know this was going on social media, Officer Daryl admitted. Officers do this every day. Not just police but different public service jobs as well. Teachers, social workers, all of us do this. It's not a rare occurrence. Let's move on to the next story. Janice Rude was shocked by her father's decision to intervene in her relationship with Wilson. Her engagement had already been announced to the local newspaper, but now that she looked at it, it had a different meaning. The announcement ended with the words, No date has been set for the wedding, a phrase that now sounded like an ominous warning. Rude knew she couldn't afford to complete her education without financial help from her father. So what was she going to do? Both Rude and Wilson were heartbroken that they would have to make such a massive decision. Getting an education was incredibly important to Rude, and she was determined to get a degree, but at what cost? She was madly in love with Wilson and didn't know what to do or where to turn. That's when her mother stepped in to offer some help. But little did Rude know that it wouldn't be enough, and what was once a classic love story would soon turn into a tragedy. Janice Rude's mother took out a second mortgage on her house in hopes that she could help pay for her daughter's tuition and the couple would be able to stay together. But sadly, it still wasn't enough. Forced with making the decision of leaving school, thus abandoning her dream degree and staying with Wilson, or breaking up with the love of her life, she chose the latter. She sadly ended up breaking off the engagement and ending her relationship with Wilson. My father forced us apart from the following January by refusing to pay my tuition if I didn't stop seeing that boy," Rude lamented. She went on to complete her degree in biology at Occidental College, but she would never forget about Wilson. Prentice and I should have taken his mother's advice at the time, which was to elope. I became fearful that Prentice would be attracted to smarter women if I didn't get a college degree. He did not understand my angst, and so we went our separate ways. The two slowly drifted apart from each other. After Occidental College, Prentice Wilson went to Harvard Law School to become a tax attorney. He eventually moved to the Bay Area, where he became a successful and well-respected lawyer. After Janice Rude completed her degree in biology, she went on to run the family business. Her family ran a diving board company that was very successful, so successful, in fact, that she was inducted into the USA Diving Association Hall of Fame in Seattle. As the years went by, both Rude and Wilson married other people, and their paths almost never crossed. When they did run into each other, they viewed themselves as friends, since both of them were married. Their whirlwind engagement seemed like a dream from the past. Before either of them knew it, 47 long years passed. Both Rude and Wilson were divorced at this point, but it wasn't until tragedy struck that the two even thought about each other. Both of their mothers passed away within the span of a few months, and they had one thing in common. Both Rude and Wilson's mothers held on to the newspaper clipping announcing their engagement. The mothers got it. The mothers simply knew, and I think we also knew. Rude's mother even went as far as to keep a laminated copy of the clipping in her purse. Rude and Wilson both found the newspaper clippings while going through their mother's belongings after their deaths and decided to reach out to one another. As fate would have it, 
Both of them were divorced at the same point in their lives. After Prentice Wilson finally reached out to Janice Rue again, after so many years, she agreed to meet him at a restaurant called Cliff House in San Francisco. The two went on their first date in decades on June 20, 2010, and the big question in the air was, is the spark still there? Immediately upon seeing Wilson again, Rude knew that the spark was indeed still there, even after 47 long years apart. From there, they practically picked up from where they left off and started dating again. After six months of dating, the couple were engaged for the second time. Even though a wedding date was never set the first time they got engaged, this time a wedding was going to happen for real. On August 19, 2012, Janice Rude and Prentice Wilson finally married each other in a beautiful ceremony on the Occidental College campus, surrounded by fellow classmates. We lament every day that we miss being together, Rude said in an interview with the Occidental College magazine. That's about 17,500 days, but who's counting? Because of that, they cherish every moment they have.